we're talking about narcissistic fleas. Having narcissistic fleas means you've just picked up some stuff, started to act like the narcissist in certain ways or behave in ways that people might perceive as narcissistic. It might be a pattern of speech. It might be a little habit of bullying or picking up any sort of negative energy or behaviors or patterns from a narcissist. But the difference between being a narcissist and having narcissistic fleas is when you have narcissistic fleas, you can look at yourself and you can go, oh, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to act like that. And then you can make meaningful change. A narcissist cannot do either of those things. They cannot recognize the bad behaviors in a real way and they cannot make long-term meaningful change just by the nature of their disorder. Did you ever hear that old saying, if you lay down with the dogs, you're bound to get fleas? Well, originally it was said a lot more formally than that by Benjamin Franklin. And it kind of explains why sometimes when we've been involved with a narcissist, we come away with certain little narcissistic tendencies in our behavior. Now that feels really hard to take sometimes because the fact of the matter is none of us wants to even think about the possibility that we could have a tendency like that, right? Now I'm going to explain why that happens and I'm going to point out certain behaviors that we might accidentally pick up from narcissists and explain what we can do to stop acting like that. So I'm a person with narcissistic tendencies. I can be short-sighted, self-centered, and extremely careless when it comes to other people and their needs and their feelings. And the only reason that I'm not a wrecking ball in every relationship that I have is because I actively try not to be, and because I'm aware of these tendencies that I have. I've been asked before how I recognize those traits in myself and how I became self-aware enough to work on them, and all I have to say is this. Every time something just really infuriates me about a person, Every time I meet someone with a trait that makes me so angry and upset, I look for it in myself. And I always find it. Sometimes when you are a non-personality disordered person who has been involved with a narcissist or another type of personality disordered person, you kind of start to imitate or emulate some of their behaviors. This is normal and natural because we all pick up habits from people we live with or spend a lot of time with. Well, this is what we call getting fleas. Sometimes it's because we've been exposed to a situation for a long time and we just kind of are looking for ways to escape from it. And sometimes we don't know how else to live, how to exist, how to demonstrate our anger, our frustration or whatever. Let me explain exactly how this kind of comes up in our lives. How do we kind of find ourselves in that place? Let's say you were raised by deaf parents, right? So as a child of a deaf parent, you never really have to be quiet. You could drop stuff on the floor, you could practice your instrument late at night, you could sing out loud at 3 o'clock in the morning if you wanted to, you could turn your stereo all the way up, your parents didn't care, they didn't hear a thing, right? Well now let's say that you went off to college, your roommate wasn't deaf. So you are slamming your drawers shut at midnight or you're playing your instrument at midnight or 2 in the morning, you're blasting your stereo while they're trying to study they're probably going to get pretty offended by that and not like you very much as a roommate. But you're not going to even think about how loud you're being because up until this point in your life, the people you lived with didn't really have a problem with you being loud. They couldn't hear you. So if somebody paid really close attention to what you were doing and they understood what it looked like when someone was hard of hearing or even partially deaf, they might think, you were deaf or had hearing loss because of the fact that you didn't seem to be aware of how much noise you were making, right? The thing is that you could hear, but because you were raised by deaf parents who couldn't hear you, you were never made to be aware of that noise. Fleas are just like that when it comes to dealing with a narcissist. Those are sort of like deaf fleas that you picked up, right? So what's the connection exactly? When you live with a narcissist, you must do things the way they do things. Everything has to be their way. You have to follow the rules. There are no questioning the rules. There are no changing the rules unless the narcissist does the changing. You're not allowed to say what you think or feel. You're not allowed to have an opinion on really anything unless it suits the narcissist. If you do have an opinion, you better make sure it matches up with the narcissist's opinion. You're not allowed to express what you want or need. You're not allowed to criticize anyone. You must accept the blame for every single thing that goes wrong in the world. Basically, you don't matter. You're a nobody. You're just their source of supply. You come last if at all. What happens when you have narcissistic fleas? Well, one of two things. Either you were raised like this and you carry this into your new relationship and you continue in the role of victim, or you were raised like this and you think this is how life is. So for me, for example, one of the things that happened to me was that when I first got into a relationship after 
I left home, I thought I was supposed to run the show. I thought that's how it went. I thought the woman runs the show, the man does what the woman says, and everybody's happy. It didn't work that way, especially because I ended up with a narcissist. But that's another story. So basically what we're talking about when we're talking about narcissistic fleas is we're talking about a type of behavior that you pick up from narcissists. So it could be that you're kind of bullying people with your words without realizing it, or you've picked up certain kind of rude behaviors or just phrasing, anything like that. It could even be actual manipulation that you've picked up, but it doesn't mean you're one of them. It just means that you're someone who has picked up habits from someone you've spent a lot of time with, which is very common, just like when you pick up an accent. The difference between you and a narcissist here is that you will notice these behaviors and you will not like them in yourself and you will do whatever you can to change them. You can heal. It does get better. Give yourself some compassion and give yourself a break. Next up, we're going to go into a little more depth on narcissistic fleas and then talk about how to get rid of them. So a lot of people ask me, what if I'm the narcissist? And chances are, if they're asking me that question, they're probably not the narcissist. But in general, that doesn't mean that we can't be displaying certain behaviors that make us seem like narcissists. For example, in my case, another thing that I did was I kind of cut everybody out of my life when I was going through the hardest parts of a narcissistic relationship. And that wasn't very good of me. That wasn't right. I shouldn't have done it. But in that moment, that flea came from the fact that I couldn't handle dealing with one more person's problem. Now, the thing is that probably you don't have narcissistic personality disorder. To be fair, some children of narcissists do have narcissistic personality disorder. But let's assume that because you're watching this video and you're asking this question, you don't have it. Let's say you grew up with a narcissist. Like most narcissists, your parent was constantly criticizing you, telling you weren't good enough, always nitpicking and whatever, making your life a living hell. As a result of that, you can't handle criticism at all. If anybody criticizes you, you feel overwhelmed and angry by it, right? That's a little narcissistic. But that doesn't mean that you're a narcissist. It just means you need to learn how to accept constructive criticism well. And the reason for that is because in this case, well, you've only experienced negative, hateful feedback from people in your life. And so when you finally do get out into the real world and somebody who's well-meaning, you know, for example, when one of my viewers told me, stop putting music under your videos when you're talking, I have sensory issues, I don't like that. I realized that's very common for survivors of abuse. So I stopped doing that and my videos got better. Well, had I been angry and frustrated by that comment, I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now. You see what I mean? The behaviors that we engage in when we're kind of showing our narcissistic fleas are not good. They're not healthy. They don't make us feel good. They don't make the people around us feel good. And unfortunately, they rarely get you what you want anyway. Of course, as a survivor of abuse, you have no intention of ever hurting another person. You certainly don't have any interest in actually abusing someone. So when you notice yourself doing something that you see hurts someone or makes someone's life harder, inevitably you're going to apologize. I'm so sorry I did that. I don't know why. I don't know what came over me, right? If you yelled at someone or you got upset with someone or you got angry at someone for giving you constructive criticism, for example, you feel shameful, you feel a lot of regret about it. But then when it comes to feeling anger or feeling triggered by, about something, you might find yourself resorting back to those same behaviors. And you don't know where they came from. Well, they probably came from long-term involvement with a narcissist, whether it was a parent or a friend or a spouse, a partner. So apparently when you treat people like they treat you, they get mad. Oh. So what are some examples of narcissistic fleas? Well, maybe let's say you're in a relationship with a narcissist and you've always been faithful. And let's say you find out the narcissist had an affair. Maybe you start to have an affair as a result of that, whether it's to get back at that person or just to have your own needs met. You're certainly not a cheater by nature, but then all of a sudden you find yourself cheating. Or maybe you're a really calm, kind-hearted person and you, you mean no one any harm at all, but then you start gossiping or you start shouting at someone and insulting them in ways that you kind of are just used to hearing the narcissist do. Maybe you even find yourself kind of badgering your children a little bit when they're in trouble. Oh, really? Did you really just do that? Because you heard the narcissist do that all the time. Maybe you're someone who has traditionally been a laid back, easygoing kind of person, but then your partner does something that triggers you and you become physically abusive and you've never done that before. It's not who you are. Where do these things come from? You almost feel like they came from outside yourself, right? Well, they kind of did. The destructive behaviors come out most often when you're feeling angry. Anger is a, an emotion that's really difficult to control because it comes at us almost out of nowhere. When we feel like something's more being wronged or we're being somehow slighted or not getting what we deserve, 
we instantly naturally become angry. Our adrenaline shoots up, our ability to think logically is shrunk down. Basically, we're sort of a tightly wound spring because we're in fight or flight mode. While most of the time we're more likely to try to keep the peace, there are times that that will come out of us. Those those little fleas come right out. Even though we might lash out at someone, we might quickly back up and you know, backpedal and I'm sorry, I didn't mean it like that. But sometimes it doesn't work out well in our favor. And that's when we usually start to wonder, geez, am I the one with the problem? Am I the narcissist? I saw some people posting about this in Span recently, and this is kind of what inspired me to do this video because I know it's a common issue for people who have been dealing with narcissists for long periods of time. So a few things to help you get through this. First of all, don't allow having been abused by a narcissist to allow you to abuse them back. You should definitely have firm boundaries. You should definitely keep your head in the right place. You should totally practice gray rock, but definitely don't start acting like a narcissist just to combat the narcissist. It doesn't really work. I mean, it might work for a minute, but in the long run, it's bad karma. It's bad stuff. And even if you do lash out at someone, don't allow them to use that against you later. If we're talking about a narcissist. Even if you lash out at someone, you know, own what you did. I'm sorry I messed up. But don't allow them to forever shove that in your face and make it the reason they continue to abuse you. Definitely take some time to learn whatever you can about their disorder and about how their cycle of abuse works. I've got a list of videos for you in the description below as well as in the cards above. If you're still in the relationship, work on setting those boundaries. Don't allow them to continue to treat you that way and trigger you. If you're out of the relationship, start focusing on intention. Intentionally choose who you are. Intentionally choose your actions, choose your behaviors, and move forward mindfully. Stay tuned because I'm going to come out with another video where I explain to you in even more detail on how you can start to let go of any of these types of behaviors. But in the meantime, just intentionally monitor your thoughts, intentionally think about what you do before you do it, and you're going to be golden. This brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you had narcissistic fleas? Can you think of a thing that happened to you that made you question, am I the narcissist? Or that made you, in hindsight, that made you kind of seem narcissistic? Share your thoughts, your ideas, and your experiences in the comments section below. And let's talk about this. It's more of a serious issue than I think a lot of us recognize. That's all I've got for you right now. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. Don't forget to take a look at the links I'm leaving for you in the cards above and in the description below for more help on this stuff. I'll see you soon.